have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hands than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway Oh, I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. is fairer than the lilies of rarest bloom. He's sweeter than honey from that.
to the king I don't have much to bring my heart is torn in pieces it's my offering take me to the king truth is I'm tired options are few I'm trying to pray, but where are you? I'm all churched out, hurt and abused. I can't think what's left to do. The truth is I'm weak, no strength to to fight, no tears to cry, even if I tried, but still my soul refuses to die, oh, just one touch will change my life, so take
ask you to take your Bibles and look with me in Psalm 30. I want us to read this morning the 30th Psalm. And I want to talk with you about living through the nights of life. Psalm chapter 30. Would you honor God's Word by standing with me as we read this great psalm? David writes, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to thee for help, and thou didst heal me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from Sheol. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise. To the Lord, you, his godly ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. Now as for me, I said in my prosperity, I will never be moved. But, O Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was dismayed. To thee, O Lord, I called, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise thee? Will it declare thy faithfulness? Hear, O Lord. And be gracious to me. O Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast loosed my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. That my soul may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to thee forever. God bless the reading of his word. Thank you. Please be seated. Aaron was born in 1974. It was a normal delivery, no complications, and at first everything seemed to be fine, but soon his mom and dad noticed that he couldn't keep anything down. His little system would not digest the food that they were giving to him. By the time he was a year old, it was obvious that something was terribly, terribly wrong. He was able to do no more than a one- or two-month-old baby could do. He never developed abilities beyond that of an 18- to 20-month-year-old baby in all of his life. He was 10 years old. When he finally began to take some feeble, tentative steps without the help of his stroller, he was never able to speak a word. And on June 2nd, 2007, Aaron died at the age of 32. Now, I've just described to you the worst nightmare of a parent. Any of you here today that are moms or dads, grandmas or grand, granddads, you know that none of us want or expect to live past our children. But to see that child struggle and fail to thrive and ultimately die is unbearable. And sometimes, sometimes we live in the night of life. It may last a few days, it may last a few decades, but if you've ever lost a parent, you've ever had a loved one die, you've ever seen a precious 
son or daughter or brother or sister lay in a hospital bed and struggle with disease, or if you've ever had a, if you've ever had a relationship broken, if you've ever had a friend betray you, if you've ever gone to work one day and the company tell you, we're sorry, we no longer need your service, and suddenly you're wondering, how am I going to feed my family? You know what it's like to be in those nights of life. The psalmist David had been such, in such a night. It was a desperate, threatening night in his life. And as a result, he writes Psalm 30. We don't really know what all David was going through. We know it was an extreme test. Verse 2 seems to indicate there may have been some life-threatening disease that David was struggling with. But he learns how to live through the nights of life. And he tells us as well. Now, the reason I'm, I'm sharing this with you today, I just felt compelled to, to preach on this today because in the last couple of weeks, a lot, of our, a lot of our family has been hurting. We had four families in two days lost husbands, moms, sisters. In two days, they were just gone. In the last eight days, I have visited three of our church family members that are in the, probably the final days of their life here on earth. I've had folks in this last week and a half come up to me and say, Pastor, I lost my job. I need to find work. Others that go to work every day just holding their breath, expecting to lose their job. We're in, the, we're in the drilling capital of the world here. Many of you have oil-related jobs, and those aren't faring so well right now. So I thought, how can I give a word of encouragement? How can I share with you a tool something to put into your pocket and take home today, how to live through these times. Well, David tells us in Psalm 30 how he got through those times. He says in the, in the very first few verses here that he got through it by, by personally praising God for victories in his life. Now, this is a precious psalm. This is a very intimate psalm. This is a psalm of devotion. You and I get to look inside David's relationship with God in this psalm. And we see how that David trusted God, not just for eternity in heaven. David trusted God for every breath. David trusted God for every act in his life. And so as David is in this nighttime of his life, he calls out to God and he begins to praise the God who has saved him. And I, I want to say right up front here, if you're going through a night in your life, or you will go through a night in your life, the only way to really make it through those times is if you have a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. He is the one who delivers us through those times. And David cries out to his heavenly father. And the first thing David does is he praises God for God's rescues in his life. David has a lot of enemies. He had a lot of enemies all of his life. He was the warrior king. And there were people constantly who were wanting to usurp his throne. Even his own son wanted to take his life and take his father's throne. 
He was always fighting. He was always battling. And David said, Lord, you lifted me up and you have not let my enemies rejoice over me. We think of the battles that David fought and we think, well, you know, it was a boy he fought against Goliath and, and slew that giant. But David already was a seasoned warrior by the time he got to the valley there to fight Goliath. Because you remember he went into King Saul and said, I'll go fight that giant. And Saul said, oh, you can't fight that giant son. You're just a boy. He's a seasoned warrior. And David said, oh, no. But once there was a lion that came into my, my camp, God delivered that lion into my hand, and this giant will be just another lion. On another occasion, there was a bear that came into the camp, and God delivered that bear into my hand, and this giant will be just like that bear. David already knew what it was like to face enemies and what it was to fight. Whether you realize it or not, we have an enemy. That enemy is not political. That enemy, enemy is not national. That enemy is spiritual. And he has one purpose in his heart, and that is to destroy you. Everything about you. If he can destroy you physically, he will. If he can destroy your family, he will. If he can destroy your walk with the Lord, he will. If he can keep you from ever knowing God, he will. His whole, his whole scheme, his whole plan of his, of his existence is to destroy God's creation. And you are the pinnacle of God's creation. David knew what it was like to be delivered from those enemies. And you and I can't even begin to count this morning how many times God has delivered us. When we get into those nights of life, remember, God is our rescuer. He not only prays God for his rescues, but he also prays God for his restoration. He says in verse 2, Lord, I cried unto thee for help, and you healed me. You put me back together. You raised me up. We don't know exactly what it was that had David's life, but, but he didn't forget that God was the one who put him back together. And he restored him. He also says, God, you saved me from the pit. You brought me up. Brought my soul up from Sheol. You kept me alive that I'd not go down to the pit. David praised God for his redemption. And his salvation, he said, God, you're the one who saves me. When we go into the nights of life, David tells us, look. I've been there. I've been in the depth of the darkness. You want to live through the night of life. You begin to personally praise God for victories that he's given you in your life. The second thing David does is he moves from the personal to the plural. And David said, you and I need to publicly promote God's glory. He calls out in verse 4, to the congregation, and he says, sing praise to the Lord, you his godly ones, you saints of God. Come and praise God and give thanks to his holy name. What David was doing, he was calling others to come and be with him in praising God. Now, let me tell you this morning, if you're going through a nighttime in your life, let me tell you what the number one trap that Satan will lay in your path. He may already be trying to do this, but here's what he'll do. He will try to isolate you. He will try to separate you, not only from the presence of God, but from the presence of God's people. He will pull you apart. He will get you alone, and he will win. Time after time, people walk into those difficult times in life. They're in those struggles in life. They're hurting. And one of the first things we tend to do is we don't want to talk to anybody. We, want, we don't want to be with anybody. We don't want to come to church. We just want to be by ourselves, and it is the most dangerous thing you can do. Because when we're alone and when we're separated, from God's people, because there is power in this thing called fellowship. There's power in the body of Christ. And when we're separated from that, 
we're vulnerable to the attacks of Satan. So David calls for the people of God to come and praise God with him. He understands that only those who have not experienced much of God are silent about him. Those that have experienced God's presence, those that have walked through the nights of life before, they're going to declare God's goodness. So David calls publicly and says, come and let's worship God together. And then he gives some reasons why that we ought to worship God. He said his anger is but for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. There are times when God disciplines us. There are even times, and that's because we've disobeyed him, but there are other times God puts us to the test. Not because we've done anything wrong. He just wants to strengthen us. But David said, discipline is temporary. But God's grace is eternal. His grace never ends. He says suffering is temporary. He said weeping may last for the night. We're going to all suffer at some point. We're going to go through periods of suffering. But that is temporary. Heaven is forever. This last week, I told you I was visiting with three different individuals in our church that are in the last days of their physical battle here on earth. But I tell you what, Every one of them, every one of them had a spirit of anticipation of heaven. And one of our dear ladies, I was visiting in her home and prayed with her. And right before I prayed, I said, you know, however this turns out, you win. You win. Whether God reaches down and temporarily heals your body and raises you up off of that bed and you go back to the kitchen and start baking cakes. Or whether he closes your eyes, wraps you up in his arms and brings you into his presence, you win. That's the great thing about Jesus. We win. Morning may last for the night, but joy comes at daylight, and it's forever. Publicly promote God's glory. Call others to come and join around you in that period of time and give glory to God. And then David gives us a warning. He said, here's something you need to watch out for, and that is that a presumptuous spirit will always fail you. He gives us a little insight into his own testimony. He, he makes a confession here. And he said in verse 6, As for me, I said in my prosperity, I will not be moved. Now what David was saying was, there was a time in my life where I kind of felt like in my own heart, I got this thing handled. I can take care of my life. I'm good. I'm king. I've got plenty of money. I've got plenty of resources. I've got soldiers that do my bidding. Nothing can happen to me. You ever felt that way? Hey, I've got, I got a great job. i got a great house. i got a new car. i got a wonderful family. i got money in the bank. After last Friday, you got less in the bank than what you did have. But we have, a, we have a way of kind of building in this kind of self-confidence that I got this thing wrapped up and I'm going to take care of it and, and uh, I've made all my plans and so I can just chart my own course through the rest of my life. And David said, oh no, you have that attitude and you're in for a bad night because that kind of self-confident, arrogant spirit will always fail you. There will come, there will come the darkness, there will come the trial, there will come the pain. And if you're depending on your strength, you won't make it. You won't make it because that quickly, that job can be gone. That quickly, 
that house can be lost. That quickly, that family can be separated from you. And everything that you've trusted in, everything that you've had confidence in, it is all gone and nothing is there. So David said, in my own arrogance, in my prosperity, I said, I will not be moved. But then he said, oh, no. No, Lord, it is by your grace that I have meaning and purpose and joy in my life. He said, Lord, it is by your favor that you have made my mountain to stand. It's God's strength. So David warns us, don't be presumptuous. Don't don't believe that you're going to take care of everything in your life because situations can change so rapidly. The last thing David tells us, when we're in these nights of life, David gives us a promise, and that is prepare for a certain victory. As I said a moment ago, if we're in Christ, we're going to win. Either way it goes, we're going to win. He says in verse 10, Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be thou my helper. David understood God. He knew that God heard. He knew that God cared. And he knew that God would deliver. He said, you are the God who hears. Literally, the text in the Hebrew reads, Yahweh Otzer, the God who hears. God is a God who hears our every cry, our every whimper. Like a mother waiting over the crib of her infant, she hears the slightest whimper. She's, she's right there taking care of whatever's wrong. God hears. God cares. And he's able to help. And David said, Joy will come. You have turned from me my mourning into dancing, loosed my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Joy is going to come. God will deliver us. The morning Aaron died, his dad called me. To tell us the news. He asked me if I would preach Aaron's funeral, and I said, Of course. Diane and I had known them before Aaron was ever even born. I said, I'd be honored to do that. And then on the other end of the line, he said, You know, Jay, he said, I just thought of something this morning. And I said, What's that? He said, This morning, for the first time in his life, Aaron's able to talk. He won. We go through nights in life. They may be brief or they may be extended. But in Jesus, we win. Let's bow our heads together. Thank you for joining us online at West Conroe Baptist Church. We stream both our services live every Sunday at 8 and 11 a.m. If you're thinking about visiting us in the near future, you can find us at 1855 Longmire Road in Conroe, Texas. Visit our website at wcbc.us for more information on our church's full list of events, services, missions, and more. You can also give on our website under the e-giving tab. Again, we want to thank you for joining us online, and we hope to see you soon here at West Conroe Baptist Church.